The Sound. The Sound of Essex. Breakfast with Sonia Watson. BBC Essex. Birthday quiz coming up inside this half an hour. 7.36 is the time. Now, do you remember or maybe still play a bit of this? Professional football at your fingertips. Want to hear from you on 0800 111 4041 if this is something you really enjoyed playing back in the day or maybe you still like a bit of it right now. And we're talking about it on BBC Essex this morning because a new group has been launched in our county celebrating Sabutio. This is the Rochford and South End Casual Sabutio Club. It's been going since the end of August in a micro pub in Rayleigh. Maybe you've been along to some of those meetings already and you want to tell us what it was like. And they're going to be meeting for the seventh time tonight. It has attracted players from as far away as Leeds. And I can talk now to Stuart Grant, who's the man behind it. He also vlogs as Sabutio Collector on YouTube. Good morning to you, Stuart. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for having me on. You are welcome. So this is this is pretty popular already, right? This club that you've got going? It's took off a bit more than I thought. I mean, when we originally set it up, I thought I'd be lucky if I got three people turn up. And the guy that I set it up with was like, oh, we'll probably only need one table. And well, on the first night, we had about 20 people come down. We had locals popping into play and it was absolutely fantastic with people just like, oh, I remember Sabutio. I want to play. I want to play. And even now when we have sort of seven, eight, nine people turn up, people are stopping at windows, peeking in, having a look. It, honestly, it's really rekindled a lot of that nostalgia and that vibe from being a kid and almost that memory of you used to play it on the carpet but now we've got grown-up money we can play it on tables and we can have a beer while we do it and it, it really it's, it's gone it's been amazing but I couldn't say any more about it I saw one of your your videos that you put out on <laughs> on YouTube actually and the atmosphere looked looked oh, brilliant it was like a Saturday night we couldn't believe it it was the first time we turned up to do it I didn't know what we was walking into that was Literally where I thought, oh, if three people turn up, it'll be all right. We can have a little round robin. And it turned into a Saturday night. We had the music going. There was a good a good amount of drink flowing. It was beyond what we really thought would be our wildest dreams. We had locals getting involved. We've had people come back since that night. It really was something amazing. It was something that you just didn't think. I mean, I look at these Sputio clubs that are around the country and they generally, and this, this sounds like I'm going to be derogatory to them, but they play in little town halls. It's all very quiet and very, oh, let's play this, let's play it like that. And there's not a lot of atmosphere. It seems too serious. But then when we did that night, it just sort of broke out and it was just like, wow, Sputio can be fun. It can be a laugh. It can be, it can be a big night out for your week. It could be something to look forward to. And I know I look forward to it. I mean, I, we've got the club going tonight. Tomorrow, I'll be thinking about, oh, I can't wait to get down and do it again. You know what I mean? And people will be messaging, saying, oh, can we come down? Yeah, it's amazing. How how did this start for you then? When did you find a love for Sabitio? So I started, well, I say I started, I got bought a set in 1990 for Christmas by my mum and dad. And then as a kid, you have it. And I probably didn't appreciate quite how I played it around the house and would get it out, put it away. And then you grow up, you enter your teen years and computer games come along and you get rid of these things. And then... A few years ago, well, I say a few years ago, about 10 years ago, I was talking to my flatmate at the time and he said he wanted the model railway in his flat or in his loft when he grew up. And I was like, all right, cool. You should do a Sabutio one. You should definitely have a Sabutio stadium. And then the years went by. I moved in with my partner now and I had a bit of money. I had a bit of time. We had a huge loft. And all I wanted to do was build a Sabutio stadium that I wanted as a kid. Because anyone who ever collected Sabutio or played Sabutio will remember flicking through the catalogs and just looking at the stadium and dreaming, that's what I want. So impractical to play with because you can't play on it because you can't get over the stadium. But you wanted that stadium. And I had the money, I had the time, and I started building it. And one thing led to another. Next thing you know, you're buying teams and you're buying weird and wacky accessories. And then I started the YouTube vlog about it because I thought, I watch a lot of YouTube. There's not a lot on YouTube. I'll start that. We started doing that. And then the club kind of come around through a lot of pestering, really, because people would always say to me, do you play? And I was like, no, not really. I, I don't really get the time. I don't really have anyone to play with. My boys are too young. My wife won't do it with me. And so I just collect. And after a lot of pestering from a few people we did a podcast with, 
pestering from Alan Lee, who helped sponsor us at Wobbly Hobby, who come down and helped set the club up. For a bit of pestering through, I thought, all right, fair enough, we'll see if we can get a venue. And one of the important things I wanted it to be was casual. Didn't want it to be serious. We you walking in, because walking into a new club can always be a bit intimidating. So I wanted it to be nice and casual and fun, where anyone can turn up and turn up one week and then not another, not have to worry about being bogged down with rules and take it as it comes. So I went around a few local bars, went into Crafty Cast in Rayleigh, and they was really accommodating. I was like, yeah, sure, you can come in, come do it on a Tuesday night. And it all went from there, really. <laughs> And it kind of works, as you said, because you've got that nostalgia element with many people's own childhoods, but also you've got that social element of bringing people together. A little bit of competitiveness, which is always good, isn't it? And yeah. quite a lot of fun. So you're ticking a lot of boxes with, with Sabutio, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. And with the competitive edge, you really don't need to worry about losing because I do all the time. <laughs> I am actually not very good at all. But it is, there's, there's that real social element. Nowadays, people go, they, put their, they pick up their controller they put on the telly and they sit there and they're playing a thing whereas with this it's like a pub sport it's like playing snooker around the table you're actually talking communicating having a laugh having a bit of fun having a bit of banter and it does it brings back their memories when you was a kid because i mean sabutio is so iconic the silhouette of an eye of a sabutio figure is so iconic from people that were growing up in the 60s 70s the 80s even the 90s like myself it just brings back that pure nostalgic joy of Sabutio and being a kid and just escapism. I mean, for that 10 minutes you're playing a game, you're not in the real world, you're on the football pitch and these play, little players have names and it it really does get like that. And when you, There's nothing more satisfying than scoring a goal. I mean, I don't score many. I hit the post most of the time, but that moment when you flick the ball and it actually goes in, you did that, you scored that goal. And I'm. you'll see videos of me on YouTube running around the table because I'm just happy I've done it. If you're sitting at home with a controller on a screen and you score a goal, you don't get any of that. Do you think it's still competing with, with the big boys, with the games now? If you, if you look at kind of the nostalgia is one bit, isn't it? But how does it fare now with younger children growing up in your experience now? Does it still have that, that sense of popularity and appeal, would you say, for younger generations? It, it doesn't, know. I mean, the, the people that own Sabutio at the moment who license it from Hasbro, they really are trying, I'd say, their best to get it out there. But at the same time, they're not doing very well. They are. There's two markets with it, I suppose. There is the older, but there's the older people like myself who want to play it and want to collect it and have that nostalgic value. But the new product that they're aiming at kids isn't the best product, and it isn't a great entry into it. The figures aren't as strong as they used to be. The teams are. I mean, once upon a time you could buy Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, South End United, even. Now you only really get a couple of sides where you don't get any lower league teams. So it's it's hard for teams to look at and go, oh, I want that, when they can go out and look at a computer game and see Mbappe on a cover. I think, I know him, he's big, I want that. There's no massive endorsement. Even with the most recent advert that Sabuti have put out, it's great that they've used John Motson doing the voiceover because you hear it and you instantly think football. But to kids nowadays, they won't necessarily associate that with football. Yeah. We, it would be really good if we could get proper players behind it because that really would do it. Because it's great for tactics. There's a few players and a few clubs out there that go into schools, they show people the Sabutio and they use it for tactics on their pitch. And you'll see these school sides and Sunday league sides get a Sabutio pitch out and they'll use the players around. It. And that in itself opens the world up to what it could be. And just lastly, because I've got to go to the travel, but we're talking on Zoom, so I can see you, Stuart, and I can yeah. see in the background, <laughs> you have got dozens and dozens of boxes. How many pieces have you got, do you think? Oh, pieces? Probably millions of pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but of teams, there's so much. I mean, there's more behind you. I've got, you're at your, the camera is actually set up at the moment on a pitch with a stadium around it. I've got a range of teams here. There's a range of teams here. There's box sets up there ranging from the 50s up until the modern day. Over there is a cabinet just full of different Sabutio balls. There's goals, there's trophies. There's quite a lot. You've got quite a and, lot, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's, it's quite a humble collection compared to some of the ones out there. It really is. I love it and I love the passion. Just remind us then, Stuart, if people want to get involved in this, if they're listening and think, oh, I quite fancy that, they can go tonight, they just turn up? Yeah, just turn up. So we'll be in Crafty Casks in Rayleigh. We generally get there about half seven. We generally start at eight. Come down, don't be intimidated. If you haven't got any Sabutio teams and you want to come play, we provide teams. We'll show you how to play. The guys down there are really casual. Don't worry about learning the rules. I still don't know myself, if I'm honest. If you want to get in touch, just search Raz Sabuto Club 
on any of the socials or myself, Sputio Collector, on any of the socials. We'll be able to give you all the details. Brilliant. Hope it goes well. Great to talk to you. Uh, Stuart Grant, the man behind that club. And if you have some pretty fond memories of playing, collecting, maybe you're still really into it, 0800 1441. We're talking Sabutio on the show this hour. Get in touch with your memories if you're still a big fan, 0800 1441. Barry Lewis here with the BBC Essex Travel right now. Breakfast with Sonia Watson. BBC Essex. Thank you, Barry. 7.48, couple of minutes, and we'll be launching the birthday quiz for today, this 16th of November. I really enjoyed hearing about Sabutio on the show in the last few minutes and that club that started just a few months ago, meeting tonight in Rayleigh. So if you're in the area, or maybe if you're not and you fancy travelling and you like a bit of Sabutio, pop on down there, have a laugh. It sounds great fun. Smithy, can I confess something to you? Yeah. And Essex, I don't think I've ever played it. Have you never played it? Is that bad? Have you never played it? I don't think I have. I played quite a lot as a child and actually as an adult when you go on holiday um, of the table football. I like the table one, you know, with the handles. You've got Mm. handles either side and you just do a bit of that. But I've not done the ceviche. The ceviche is a sort of little teeny tiny figures, isn't it, with the round base and you kind of flick them, right? That's right. Yeah. Looks good. I remember it. Don't know if my brother, because sometimes I get involved, like when he had scale electrics, I'd sort of get involved playing along with that. But I don't know if he had Sabutio. Doesn't ring any bells, but you've played it, haven't you? Yeah, well, I had some friends who, who had sets. I have to say I was never very good at it. I enjoyed hearing that old advert from back in the day. <laughs> yes. That brought back memories. And the, the man at the end says, professional football at your fingertips. Well, I tell you what, at the end of my fingertips, it didn't really look like professional football. <laughs> because... People used to say they'd get sore nails where you're kind of, con- if you're real into playing it, where you're kind of constantly playing it, you'd get sore nails. Want to hear from you this morning then, if you were a big fan of Sabutio, if you grew up playing it, maybe you're still into it now, and if you did have a fairly sizeable collection, because it seemed that there was no end, certainly back in the day, to how many different bits you could have for the stadiums. And I read somewhere you could even get Sabutio streakers. So that caught my eye. Really? Yeah, uh, apparent. I don't know if that's true. I just read it. <laughs> <laughs> so it might not be true. But you could get a lot of different pieces in all the different teams, yeah. what Stuart was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All your big teams. Wonderful. Uh, uh, Stuart watchword is sort of fun isn't it and, and casual and not getting bogged down in in the rules or what he calls the laws because yeah. football has laws he says and uh Stuart says that you don't actually have to flick the players because when you're little it's gonna hurt dude. when well but i think controlling how far yeah. they're gonna go is kind of difficult Stuart said in his one of his videos just, i was watching you can just sort of shovel them along with your side of your okay. thing he's very i think there is probably you know, a technique, and I'm sure there's a knack to it, and I'm sure if you were spending hours and hours on it, you you would get good, right? Because you would just figure out like how anything. much pressure you need to put on with the flick. Yeah, but uh, he says he just do what feels comfortable and don't worry about it too much. So he's the kind of guy you could imagine having a good game with, even if you thought you were going to be. It's uh, chilled. Yeah. It's very chilled. Yeah. Do you want to know a fun fact, which? I didn't know because I've never played Sabutio. It wasn't originally meant to be called Sabutio. Really? It was actually meant to be called, I was reading about this, it was supposed to be called Hobby. Uh, The chap who created it wanted to call it Hobby, couldn't get the trademark, so ended up with Sabutio instead, which is derived from a Latin term, Falco Sabutio, which is a bird of prey. I am just, I've got so much bird news this week. Yes. (laughs) Well, might not be. Uh, Colin's from Benfleet. Morning, Colin. Morning, son. Morning, morning. morning. You morning. want to talk to BJ? What do you want to tell us? Uh, well, I used to just play at school. We, you know, it was very popular when we were kids in the seventies and eighties, and uh, you could buy every team you could think of. It used to go in alphabetical order. Like one, I think, was Aloha, and it would start off in you know that sort of format, and you could get anything you wanted. You could get referees. You even had corner kickers throw in figures that used to spring back and throw the ball in. Uh, you could get a uh, TV gantry. You could get a, a scoreboard. You used to change the teams with like little pieces of paper uh, that came in it, uh, as well as the stadium, fences, 
Did you have a lot of the extra bits then, Colin? Did you go big with the collection here? Uh, yeah, I did have quite a few. Yeah, I did have. I, I probably quite a bit. Yeah, I did. It's, it's still actually in my mum's loft, a lot of it. And I might even actually take. I live in Benfleet, as you know, obviously. So I might even take that up and have a little bit of a nostalgia trip and go to Rayleigh one Tuesday night. Yeah, you should get yourself down there because I think you'd be be in your element. And that was the thing, I suppose, yeah. it's this whole imagine. If you liked football and you yeah, had this I whole imaginary it. world that you could build around it where you could feel like you were a real part of any given game, you were in control of it, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, even even as a 10, 11-year-old who was at junior school, we, we set up a, a league of about 10 or 12 of us and we just used to go around each other's house. You had to, you had to just sort of be truthful with each other, who, who won and who lost. <laughs> And uh, it was quite, quite, quite good fun, you know. We used to like um, compete, and then they'd have a winner at the end of it, and yeah, it was good fun, really good fun. But it was, it was collecting the, it was collecting the teams on that was the thing. Yeah, yeah, and it sounds like there was so many and not so many now. Colin, good to talk to you. Any other things you want to tell us about Sabutio? 0800 111 40 41. It certainly captures the imagination. So if you've got any memories of it, you've still got quite a lot of it in your mum's loft or anywhere else, you can let us know. 81333 on the text. We're going to talk about that after nine o'clock this morning. But a couple of other things we're talking about on the show this morning relate to Sabutio, which we discussed in the last hour. We've got a club that's been set up just a couple of months back, meets in Rayleigh at a pub. A really rather lovely story. And we spoke to Stuart, who's actually behind that. And he does a lot of vlogs on YouTube as well around Sabutio. He absolutely loves it. So I want to hear from you if you love Sabutio or you played quite a lot of it back in the day, you've still got lots of the bits and bobs that you collected because there was loads of things you could get I've been learning on the show this morning and Phil has called us on that from Witten. Morning Phil. Good morning. Morning. So were you a Sabutio fan? I still had my Sabutio, yeah, but I wasn't a great fan of it. Okay, so you've still got your set. Take us back then to when you did get it and what it was like using it at the time. Oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only got I've only got three teams, I think. Um, the, two, the two that came with the with the set, which I think was uh, red and red red shirt, white shorts, red socks. Uh, the other one was blue shirts, white shorts, blue socks. I think I got a third strip, which I think was red with white trim. Very nice. And how old? Can you remember how old you were when you first got it, Phil? Oh, uh, twelve, maybe. And it's in, where is it now? You've still got it. It's in the loft somewhere. No, it's on top of a wardrobe in the spare bedroom. <laughs> I love that. The question, where is your Sabutio now? And you've, you, um, you wanted to tell us about a song to do with this as well. Is that right? Yes, I think your researcher was trying to find it. Uh, a band called Half Man, Half Biscuit. And they did a song called All I Want for Christmas is a Dukla Prague Away Kit. Can you remember the words, Phil? Uh, or is that the ex- is that the extent of it? <laughs> well, basically, the song he he goes round to his mates to play on the, play the the model. I think his mates are a bit spoiled, and they go round to play the, on the model train set. But the transformer won't work, so his mum goes up to the loft, brings down a sabuto, and the guy who's singing the song he ends up with a goalkeeper with no arms and a centre forward with no head. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what, guess what we found. Half man, half biscuit on on goal test. Let me just All dust it off. It's a super triangle away kit. Right, here we go. Let's press play on it. So he sent his doting mother up the stairs with the step ladders to get the Subutio out of the loft. He had all the accessories required for that big match atmosphere, the crowd and the dugout and the floodlights too. You'd always get palmed off with a headless centre forward and a goalkeeper with no arms and a face like his. There you have it. <laughs> Phil, it's just as you uh, describe it, isn't it? Yeah, I think he, he ends up losing. He ends up losing the game to um, dodgy offside, dodgy offsides, and dodgy offside goals and dodgy penalties. There's a big ruck, and he gets banned from his parents' house. That's <laughs> quite the story in that song. Thank you, Phil, for your call. Phil from Whitton with another Sabutio story. Sons Sabutio stories. That, that, that's that's excellent. If you've got one, you can add to the list, or, or you might want to tell us about a sort of childhood 
obsession which has grown with time when we talked to Stuart Grant earlier who set up the uh, basically Sabutio Club it's called the Rochford and Southend Casual Sabutio Club and they meet I love that. they meet again tonight actually uh, he he talked about you know getting getting the game about 30 years ago off his mum and dad at Christmas and playing on the carpet now he's a grown up he's got a loft he's got a, what he calls grown up money and he's allowed beer and his hobby has grown and he's obviously sort of uh, established social hub in in uh, in one of the pubs down in Rayleigh and it gets loads of people along so is there something that you that you loved that you now love more than ever We've been talking about Son's Sabutio stories on the show this morning as well because we've got a chap who set up a club which comes to a pub in Rayleigh. It's meeting tonight. I think it's their seventh meeting that they've got tonight and they are getting in crowds from from Essex but a little bit further afield as well. You can just rock up to the pub, have a couple of drinks, have a chat and play some Sabutio. And Stuart, the chap who does a bit about Sabutio on YouTube and he set this club up, it's been a real passion of his since he was a child and he's been lucky lucky enough to expand on that childhood obsession into adulthood. So he makes videos about Sabutio, he runs a club about Sabutio and his collection for Sabutio is huge now (laughs) as he's gone into adulthood. So we've been talking a little bit about your memories of Sabutio on the show this morning and David from Colchester has another. Good morning, David. Good morning, Sonia. Good morning. Tell me, what's, what's your involvement with Sabutio? Did you used to play it? Yes, it goes back to the late 1940s when I was about 16 to 18. And um, this Culture Sabutio Club was formed um, in St John's Road, Colchester. A man converted um, a chicken shed into a clubhouse. It was a man called Nigel Graham, I remember. And... um, so we used to go up there and play matches on a club night, perhaps around about 12 to 20 people, I suppose, playing on one table. Um, all, all the people chose a, a football team as their club. Who um, did you pick for yours, David? Who was your team? I, I can't remember. I'm <laughs> in my late 80s now. <laughs> but you remember playing it. Did you like it? Oh, uh, yes. I think I was one of the better players and um, we were very competitive, to say the least. Did it sometimes get a little bit feisty? Is that what you're telling me, David? Yeah, yeah no. We were, we, were all, we were all good pals. That was all right. But, um, yeah, we were. As I say, competitive is the word, I think. Exactly. Now, this kind of developed to the next generation, didn't it, with your son as well? Tell me about that, David. Well, yes, um, because when he got round about 17 or 18, that's going into the 1980s. And um, his club met in, um, turn, in a, a hall in Turner Road. And that was still to do with Colchester Sabutio League, was it? It was still going strong? Well, it would be, be be completely completely different. I mean, the other one would have closed uh, closed down. I don't know how long that it went on because I, I joined up in the air force and so I lost track of it. But I shouldn't think there's anybody else living who played in that league that was in St John's Road. David, that is an incredible story. I don't think we've spoken before, David, so make sure you give me a call again. What a cracking story. And I wonder if David is the last surviving member there of the Colchester Subutio League, dating back to the 1940s, meeting with Nigel Graham on St John's Road in Colchester. Yeah, I mean, if if, wow. if you can shed any light on that, if you can um, maybe complete some pieces of a jigsaw there... Uh, do let us know, 0800 111 It's been going for an awful long time, hasn't it, Sabutio? And I was talking to you earlier, Smithy, about the fact I've lost me fun facts that you never knew about Sabutio. Honestly, I need to sort myself out. Here we go. It was supposed to be called Hobby. Chap who created it, Peter Adolf, couldn't get the trademark, so he went with Sabutio instead, which comes from a Latin scientific name for a bird of prey. Falco Sabutio. There you go. There's your fun fact for today. It's extraordinary, isn't it? That fun fact. 
It's a good fact, isn't it? I quite like that. And did you know, don't you know, you can get Sabutio cricket, rugby and hockey as well. And one of the main reasons it did become successful in the early days was because it featured team colours other than red or blue. So it wasn't just the red team, the blue team. As we heard, you can have so, you could get so many different strips linked to your teams as well. You could get stands, you could get the big TV stands, you could get floodlights, all of that. So you could really build it up into something, which I've enjoyed learning about with you on the show. And a South Essex Sabutio club is attracting members from across the country who want to get involved in the vet retro football game. The Rochford and South End Casual Sabutio club start, was started in August by Stuart Grant, who can't believe its success. We couldn't believe it. It was the first time we turned up to do it. I didn't know what we was walking into. That was literally where I thought, oh, if three people turn up, it'll be all right. We can have a little round robin. And it turned into a Saturday night. We had the music going. There was a good a good amount of drink flowing. It was beyond what we really thought would be our wildest dreams. We had locals getting involved. We've had people come back since that night. It really was something amazing. 